A reflection for Trinity Sunday. Praise be Jesus Christ now and forever. From today's Gospel from Matthew. At that time Jesus said to his disciples, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you all days, even unto the consummation of the world. Well, on a day like today, I would commend to you the Athanasian Creed. In fact, it is there in the traditional breviary and prime. It begins like this. Whosoever will be saved before all things it is necessary that he hold the Catholic faith. Which faith, except every one do keep whole and undefiled, without doubt he shall perish everlastingly. And the Catholic faith is this, that we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity, neither confounding the persons nor dividing the substance. We haven't got time to go through all of the rest of the clauses in the Athanasian Creed. But notice that beginning, which faith except everyone do keep whole and undefiled, without doubt he shall perish everlastingly. Our creed, our faith is very important. And there at the very top is God the Trinity. Is it important, I wonder, to have any understanding of the Trinity beyond, say, repeating that we believe in one God in three persons, neither confounding the persons nor dividing the substance? Can we actually push ourselves to go further than that? After all, it's a mystery. It's beyond our ken. And there are those quite rightly, who say that if you think you've understood the Trinity, then you haven't. If you think you've understood God, then I'm afraid you haven't. But this faith in the Trinity is very distinctive, and we need to be able to defend it, don't we? In many parts of this country, there are people of different religions, Muslims, Hindus, and so forth, as well as those who have no faith at all. And it would be a good idea to think a bit about how we can say we are monotheistic while claiming that a man, Christ Jesus, is equally God as the Father, and so is the Holy Spirit. Is the Son of the Father God? Yes. Is the Holy Spirit God? Yes. Does that make three gods? No. One God, three equal persons. No other religion has this truth at its core, and we can't avoid it. Notice that today's Gospel ties together baptism and the Trinity. A baptism without the Trinitarian formula is invalid. In fact, when I came to think about it in later life, the baptism I would received when I was a teenager, I wasn't sure whether it was in the Trinitarian formula. And so I had a conditional baptism. That way I was sure that I had entered in to the Christian faith. Our Lord, of course, leaves no doubt about the wording we should use. We've had it in that passage. At the very beginning of our Christian life, our spiritual rebirth, the Trinity is asserted. Christ, at the end of his earthly life, gave the commission, having taught his disciples what to do with those who wanted to convert, the commission baptize. This supernatural sacrament was to be administered in the name. You remember the fashion for demonstrators to distance themselves from something others, especially the government, were doing. 
They shouted, not in my name. They wore t-shirts and had banners. Not with my approval, they mean. Well, the disciples are the opposite in a way. They're going out in the name, not the name of some difficult government policy or other. No, they were going in out in the name of God, committing themselves in the name with the approval of God. The name of whom? Ah, not one name, but three. How do the three persons of the Trinity act? This is just one sliver of the possible discussion we could have about that triune God. But how do they act? The Father does nothing without the Son, the Son nothing without the Father, likewise the Holy Spirit. How can that be? Well, let's take the most important action for us, which they can do and have done, namely salvation. There were heretics in the early days of the church called Patri Passiani, who argued that the Father suffered on the cross. Patri, Father, Passion, Passiani. They were struggling with this Trinitarian question. Surely it is the Son who acted in relation to our salvation. It was he who died on the cross. Well, St. Augustine can help us. He wrote a homily on the subject of the Trinity in the baptism of Christ. And the word that he uses, at least in translation, which is very handy, is to say that Christ wrought or fashioned or made our salvation. Think of wrought iron. That is iron that has been bent and twisted under heat in order to provide, well, a gate or a decorative shape. It's been made. We read in Philippians, he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being made in the likeness of men, and in habit found as a man. He humbled himself, being, becoming obedient unto death, even to the death of the cross. Taking the form of a servant, hmm, we can see that this was a deliberate act, fashioning our salvation. So what about the role of the Father? In Romans 8 we read, He that spared not even his own Son, but delivered him up for us all. So there we have it, the work of both the Father and the Son at Calvary. We can leave the role of the Holy Spirit for another time. Please forgive us. John sums up all of these things, recording the words of Christ. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I speak not of myself, but the Father who abideth in me, he doeth the works. There we have it. So if we want to think about the Trinity working together, we need to think about them abiding together. We can distinguish the persons, but we cannot divide them. And that is so important for our faith. We live in a society which is increasingly divided. People do not abide, do they? No. And so we need to see the distinctiveness, what is on offer here with the triune God for us. This is the God who wrought our salvation. This is the God we adore and worship. One nature, three persons. One substance, three persons. And we have a part in that unity. Oh yes, we aspire, we look, we hope for that time when we will enter into the unity of the Trinity. 
Again from John's Gospel, Jesus said, If anyone love me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him, and we will make our abode with him. To make our abode in us. That is what it is all about. Of course, that is why we must seek holiness, keep his word, love his word, get to confession regularly. We want the Trinity to dwell in us. How intimate. And yet at the same time, God is ineffable, beyond, infinitely above us. The Trinity, you know, isn't a clever idea. No. In us. It's He whom we receive in the Eucharist in the encounter with the triune God in the Mass, wrought for our salvation. And so, yes, we are people of the name, the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Praise be Jesus Christ, now and forever.